Hey, how are we all today, guys? So, uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks for um, taking the time now to actually jump on and watch this video. Because um, I really just want to kind of share a little bit about me, about my background, about my story. Um, so, as you probably know, my name is Stephen O'Brien. Says so on my t shirt. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so uh, I'm from Cork in Ireland, and growing up, I was someone that was very shy, very quiet, and I actually hated myself for it. Um, there was actually a few times I actually thought there was something wrong with me because I actually hated so much of how I felt and and how I found it so hard to actually speak to people. Um, like I hated being in social situations. I used to get cold sweats. Um, I used to just want to get out of there. It was horrible. Um, during my school years, then um, my parents split, and internally I found that really hard to deal with. Any emotions or feelings that are coming up, I didn't understand them. And um, I actually kind of blame myself for my, my parents splitting up um, at times. And this is probably going back in my teenage years now, maybe 14, 15, kind of in around then. Um, so being the kind of quiet, shy kid in school and stuff like that, for me to kind of stand out and trying to make myself be seen and be liked and stuff, I was someone that used to always get in trouble. Um, smoking, drinking, taking drugs in school. And um, for me, I kind of felt I had to be that person to be liked because of how quiet and how shy I was. Um, and it, it was, I found that really tough. Um, and leading on to then, then probably when I was probably around 18 or so, I kind of got kicked out of home at a huge argument with my mother and her partner. And this kind of, it affected me for years. Now, I didn't really have a great connection with my dad. But I ended up living with him then, moved in with him for a while. And during that time, I kind of really slept, slipped into a really bad state of depression and suffered really bad with panic attacks. And I ended up drinking a lot. And it was, I think it was really because of all the internal pain that was going on. I didn't understand what to do, how to, how to get rid of all this pain. And it was all building up and... So it was nice then where I'd go to bed and I'd, I'd, I'd actually have this fear of going to bed because I knew I was going to get a panic attack. And it used to always hit me at that night time when I was trying to lie down and relax and have all these thoughts and all this mental shit going through my head. And so what I started doing is I started drinking because I knew if I was drinking, I'd be able to sleep. So that was obviously putting me spiraling out, out of control anyway. And um, so... In around that time then as well, um, I remember my dad said to me, he came back from um, from a holiday from Spain. He was like, oh, you know, they're always kind of looking for people over there to go over there and work for a summer or whatever. So I said, you know what, feck it, I'm going to head over there. Um, I was actually going out with someone at the time and we kind of went over there together. Um, so the idea was to go there for three months. I ended up staying for three years. Now, during that time, I had some really good times, but I also ended up getting in a new relationship, which ended up being an abusive relationship um, mentally uh, and ended up being physically uh, abusive as well. So I remember like there was a day where I woke up being punched in the face, um, being stupid, things like that. And it, 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 it really kind of ate me up inside. I was still this quiet, shy kid. like, And so I really wouldn't be someone that would lash out or be really kind of argumentative or stuff like that. So this kind of all built up and I just felt like I was being pushed down into a dark hole. And I got so bad one day where I found myself just sitting in the bathroom with a blade in my hand and I was slit my wrists. Now I was going back and forth and I, I couldn't really get that courage to go right in and really slit. I was getting these small little cuts and stuff. But straight away then thoughts to my brother and sister came into my mind and I was like, fuck, it. do you know what? I can't do this to them. So I stopped, I went away and... Then a couple of weeks later, I tried to hang myself. One of the lads I was hanging around with actually found me there and he was like, he pulled me out of it. And so that kind of stepped away from them. And for me, like I know it was really just a cry out for help. I, I like, I don't think I want to really kill myself, but I think it was more that I just wanted someone to come in or something to happen, something to come in and just something to pull me out of this fucking dark hole that I was stuck in because it was horrible. It really kind of ate me up. So kind of in around that time then as well, like I remember uh, my boss said to me one day, he goes, oh, do you want to come to the gym? And I was someone now, like I was, I was drinking nearly every day because I was living in Spain. It's kind of like part of the culture. Like when you're working out, you just drink. So every day is like a Saturday night, constantly on a piss, 
constantly taking drugs, constantly eating fast food. So like, it's just a complete recipe for disaster. I was in. So you get up every day, you feel like shit, and you go back and you do the whole thing over and over and over again. But he said to me one day about actually going to the gym, and I said, you know what, fuck it, I want to go. And something like that just clicked inside me ever since that very first day I went to the gym. And what it kind of done for me was it allowed me to release any anger, frustration, fear, anything that was built up. It just felt like it just exploded out of me. And I was just unleashing all the shit that had constantly built up inside of me. This was my release. This was my way of letting go of all that shit that had built up inside of me. So that was the start of my kind of um, fitness journey. Um, later on then, I ended up moving back home, rebuilt my relationship with my mother and her partner, her husband, my stepdad now. And we get on absolutely incredible now. It's amazing. Um, so that was incredible. Rebuilt the relationship. A couple of years later then, I ended up going traveling with one of the lads and we spent six, seven months going all over Asia and everything. It was unbelievable. New Zealand, went to Australia. The plan was to stay there for a year and ended up staying, for, staying there for seven years. During that time is when I kind of stepped into the fitness industry, started figuring out how the hell can I actually help people get on the whole same path that I was on, get on into the fitness of moving, of lifting weights, of feeling the way I used, I was feeling because it was fucking incredible. But anyway, so I kind of got into that, became qualified as a personal trainer. I started studying personal development, which has been, again, unbelievable for my mindset. It's been so, so good to me. Um, so that was it over the years. And I've kind of worked with hundreds of people, helping people become physically, emotionally, mentally stronger, helping them come over different challenges, helping people move more, helping people achieve things that they never thought was possible. Um, so that was incredible as well. Um, during my time in Australia, I was married as well for a while. Um, but then things just flipped and everything came crashing down. So I ended up moving away from Australia. We ended up going to New York. I was there for three months before we separated spent everything i had lost everything i had a thriving business when i was in australia i had a dream motorbike living in bondi beach five minute walk to the beach i was surfing all the time all this kind of thing living a dream lifestyle and before i knew it bang it was gone I was sitting back in car going what the fuck has just happened i had no money i obviously had no business again anymore i had nothing came back here and i was living back in my mother's house going what the fuck am i doing back here um, so, but the mindset I built over from doing all the personal development stuff has really kind of stuck with me, has really kind of helped me. So when I came back here, I was really kind of able to take a, take a bit of time and just kind of say, you know what, this is just a chapter of my life and it's over. And now a new chapter is going to begin. So what do I want to happen for me in that chapter? And I started to think about, you know what, I want to get back into doing the, into the fitness industry. I want to start up my business again. I want to get myself moving. And so things just started to unfold again for me. I started to get myself back on my feet. Um, I've now got an incredible partner um, who we're supposed, we were supposed to get married this year, but because of Corona, it's been pushed off the next year, so we're getting married as well. I um, have an amazing, beautiful little baby girl. I have an incredible stepson. So, so fast, I lost everything. And my life had been flipped upside down. But again, just in a couple of years, bang, it's flipped back up over again. So like, I truly believe that it doesn't matter what life throws at you. It's really how we take that on. And what we do with that is going to determine the, the direction that we, we start to go. Now, when I came back from Australia, I could have just let that eat me up completely. I could have just said, fuck everything, do you know? But I didn't. I stayed focused. I stayed I thought about what I wanted, the direction I wanted to go, and now I'm kind of back on my feet again, back up, moving forward again. So it's been absolutely incredible. And that has been my journey so far. And now, obviously, I'm back in the fitness industry, even got t-shirts with my own name on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, back in the fitness industry, working with people, um, became a qualified life coach. So working with people around mindset, overcoming challenges, figuring out where they're at, where they want to go, and figuring out what's, what's happening in the middle. What, what, what's that block that they need to overcome to actually get to where they want to go? So helping people do that, learning a lot more around mental health, around anxiety and stuff like that. So it's been an incredible journey of lots of up and ups and downs and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I just want to kind of reach out, share with you about my journey, the things that I've been through and just know that no matter what you're going through, 
it doesn't matter. What really matters is where you want to go because your past is in the past and it doesn't really matter of, of how you kind of see that. Now, what you can do is you can take all the learnings from your past. You can use that to strengthen your mindset. You can use that now to, to help you move forward in a, a new direction. So where you're at now doesn't matter. It's where you actually want to go. And we start working towards that and not letting all the baggage, all the pain, all the suffering from before continues to pull us back and drag us down. It's time to let go of the reins and say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. This is the direction I want to go and stay focused on that. So guys, thank you so much for listening to this. Um, if you want to reach out to me whatsoever, make sure to hit me up on social media, Stephen O'Brien Coaching. And yeah, happy to share anything or help you out in any way at all. So yeah, have a wicked day. Catch you soon.